So I honestly think that this is one of the best exercises that you can possibly play. The reason why I say that is because it involves a lot of dexterity uh, with the left hand and the right hand, also string skipping and just being a great melodic exercise at that. So let me play it for you and then we'll break it down just a little bit. One, two, three, four. So this is not a new exercise. We've done this before. If you've been here for any length of time, or if you know me, you've heard me do this exercise a ton. So this is basically using the concept of the mode. So learning the one scale in its entirety, just a longer form of it. So taking the C major scale and just running it up. Next note, starting from the next note, but still using all of the notes inside of it. So it derives from the scale, but we're only playing the arpeggiated part of the scale. So one, three, five, seven. All right, first degree, third degree, fifth degree, seventh scale degree. All right, we're doing that with each one. So the only thing that's different about this is that we're alternating it. Are we ascending it? We're ascending it and descending it. Okay, so for the first one, you're going to ascend. The next one, you're going to descend with the Dorian. Next one, you're going to ascend. And then you get the idea. So you're going, you're alternating back and forth from ascending to descending. So when you get up to the Phrygian, the Lydian, the Mixolydian, that's where it kind of gets tricky. So I'm doing this in a different position. I'm doing this in a completely different position than what we're used to doing. And for every single major seven arpeggio that's included in this exercise, we're going to be playing it with the first position. So that means first finger is going to play that first note. You're going to skip and stretch to that third note on the same string. So from C to E on the same A string. Next, we're going to have to play the G, right? The second finger kind of lands right there on the G. That's where that shift come from. And then the A, or excuse me, the B is going to be played with the first finger. So we have. Next, you're just going to slide and shift a little bit more. The reason why I'm doing this is because it allows you to shift a little bit better, a little bit easier, because you have to make so many big jumps. So instead of, you see the shift? So I went from my third finger to my first finger. So that's a weird shift. Instead of, it's a very simple, easy shift just from a half step. Okay, so the next one, fingering is going to be just normal. One, three, four, one, going down the Dorian scale. We're going to ascend the next one, Phrygian. Very simple. It's the same exact thing, but we're just flipping it upside down and we're playing it starting on the root note. Now, this is where it comes a little bit tricky. All right, this is where it gets tricky. So now after the Phrygian, we're going to shift up a whole step. All right, with our first finger. So you get that? The Phrygian. Now for the Lydian, we're gonna shift up with the with our first finger to descend this arpeggio, which is going to be a major seven. And remember what I said about the major seven arpeggio, in this exercise, we're gonna be playing it with the first position every single time. So first finger, descending, descending, descending. Okay, so we have that E, look a little bit different because it's flipped upside down and we're going backwards and we're descending but it's the same thing as the first but it's just going backwards now for this next one we're going to shift up a whole step for the next the G mixolydian we're going to play that in first position as well but you have to be careful because that seven is a flat seven it's a dominant seven scale or a dominant scale or a dominant chord or, or whatever you want to call it it just has that flat seven in it so it can't be a major it can't be a major seven the same as the first you have to flat that seven okay so and that's pretty self-explanatory then you're going to shift up for the aeolian and just go down a minor seven triad or not a minor seven triad but a minor seven arpeggio excuse me uh minor seven triad doesn't even make sense Triad is three notes. Minor seven is the one, three, five, five, seven. Anyway, musician humor or theory humor. 
anyway, so <laughs> we're descending the A minor seven arpeggio. And then we're going to ascend the low grand, the flat set, the flat five arpeggio, the minor seven flat five arpeggio. And then last but not least, we end descending. Now, this is the only the only one that we don't play the first position on the major seven arpeggio was for the last one. And that's only because it makes it easier for us to bring this exercise back down. If not, if we were ending it right there, I would tell you to play. I would tell you to play that first position arpeggio. If I can play it out and get the notes out right. There it is. So the last arpeggio, you're gonna end three, four, one, two, the second position way. Okay, now here comes the fun part when you go back down. You have the B right next to it. So it's getting getting you ready for the B locrian. I'm sorry, now we're kind of flipping what we've done in the beginning. So now we're doing B locrian. Now we're going shifting down to the Aeolian. See that move? All right, just bring it a little, a little closer so you can see. All right, so you're done. now you're going to use that same exact format ascending, descending, ascending, descending for the rest of the way. So we have B major, or not B major, B minor seven flat five, ascending, descending Aeolian, G major, ascending, G major, a dominant seven, right? Lydian, descending, uh, Phrygian, ascending, and it just fits, it, it actually fits right there. The fingering allows you to move through this exercise fluently. So, bringing this all the way down, it's the same exact thing. So what do we leave off on? There we go. So we're ascending the Phrygian, shift back a whole step, Dorian, and now we're ending on the last note. I just, I think I ended it on just one note instead of ending it on the, on the arpeggio. Either way, however you feel, you can end it that way. Um, it's just a personal preference, but it's just getting all of them out because you've done it in the beginning. So if you want to add it to that exercise at the end, perfectly fine. Do this with a metronome. Please remember to do, I didn't do it with a metronome only for, you know, for time's sake. Uh, but please play this with the metronome. I try to play it as clean as possible to a beat. <laughs> I try to do that and I can challenge myself to try to play it a little bit faster. And I have a, like an internal metronome in my head. I'm messing up all over the place. Uh. Ah, there it But anyway, you guys get the idea. Make sure your notes are coming out clean, clear, and precise. We'll have this written out for you. If you have any questions, please, you know what to do in the comments. I love chatting it up with you guys and even just responding to you uh, all the time, just different questions that you have. Um, and I love to help out in any way that I possibly can. All right. Until next time, see you guys later. Peace.